is made, and we're going to rejoice in it this morning, because God is good, not sometimes, but all the times. David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And we're here this morning to give God all the praise, to magnify his name. I don't know what you're going through this morning. But you can put it all in God's hands because he's able to lift up a bow down here. He's able to deliver you from whatever you're going through. He's able to heal you right now. He's able to bring us through this pandemic. I'm so glad that there is a God that I can call on him in the morning, in the afternoon, in the midnight hours. His line is never busy. We're glad to have you streaming in on us today because there is a word from heaven. And I'm just so glad that I'm able to stand by the grace of God and proclaim his name. And his name is Jesus, a wheel within a mill of a wheel. Jesus, who's our solid rock. Jesus, who's our high tower. So we want you to come in and enjoy yourself and give God the praise and listen for the word. It's your soul salvation. God bless you and God keep you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, it's another day, Heavenly Father, that you've made. And we thank you, Heavenly Father. We give you the praise and the honor, Heavenly Father. Because you're God and there's none other like you, Heavenly Father. We ask this morning, Heavenly Father, that you touch those who don't know you and the pardon of their sins. Heavenly Father, watch over those who are going through this pandemic, who's lost someone, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, bless each church, though, that's opening your holy name. We're living in perilous times now, Lord. And we need you more than we ever needed you before. So we ask you, Heavenly Father, put your loving arms around Lead us and guide us, Heavenly Father, by your word, through faith. We ask it in your most holy name. Amen. We bring you greetings from Mount Island Missionary Baptist Church, where our pastors, Reverend Benny W. Henry, and my brothers in the gospel. We want you to prepare for a good morning service. Let the Holy Spirit lead and guide you. Bless you and God keep you. Good morning. Our scripture this morning will come from Psalms 51, beginning at verse 10. And the reason it reads as follows Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. When will I teach transgressors thy way, and sinners shall be converted unto thee? I read Psalms 51, starting at verse 10 through 13. May the Lord have a blessing to the readers, the hearers, and the doers holy word. Let us bow our head for prayer. This morning, our Heavenly Father, we come with bowed down head and we come with a humble heart. Thanking you, Lord Jesus, for all your wonderful blessings that you have bestowed upon us, Lord. Amen. We realize, Lord, that just because we set the alarm clock last night, that didn't get us up, Lord. It was only because of your grace and mercy, Lord, you touched us and allowed us to live for a little while longer. We want to say thank you, Lord. Lord, we realize, Lord, that we can't do anything without you, Lord. Everything we have, all our beings, all of that belongs to you, Lord. And we just want to say thank you for giving your best. 
your darling son, Jesus, who hung, bled, and died so that we will have the right to the tree of life, Lord. We ask you to just bless those that uh, have bowed down head for whatever reason, Lord. Some have lost loved ones. Some may be on drugs. Some have a marital problem. But whatever problem they are dealing with, Lord, let them know that our God is bigger than their problems. There's nothing you can't do. You can do all things but fail. In fact, you have never failed. And you don't tell a lie because you can't lie. And we just thank you, Lord. Who wouldn't serve a God like you? A provider. A man regulator. Bread in a starving land. Lord, you said ask and it shall be given. But we have to ask in sincerity, Lord. You have all things. All things belong to you. We ask a blessing upon on our leaders, Lord, our president and his cabinet members, Lord. We ask a blessing upon our, all of our pastors and our preachers that's leading, these, leading the church, Lord. We ask you to just continue to bless them as they follow you, Lord. Allow us to follow them. Creating us a clean heart, Lord. Renew it, then us a right spirit. So we would do those things that are right and pleasing in you, Lord. Bright and loud tongue, where we will do and say those things that are pleasing, Lord. Encouraging word and not discouraging word, Lord. We ask a blessing upon our pastor. We ask you just continue to watch over him, bless him physical, mentally, and financially, Lord. We know that. He, he deal with a lot uh, when members have problems, Lord. We call on him, and, and he's there if he can, Lord. We ask you to just continue to just strengthen him, build him up where he's torn down, and just strengthen him on every, every side, Lord. Lord, we ask you to just bless our service today, Lord. Bless the one that's going to break the bread of life, Lord, and, and just allow him to just stand boldly. And preach what you have given him, Lord. Bless us where we will be the recipient and, and receive it and not just hear the word, Lord. But let's bless us where we will be doers of your word. Go out and tell others what they must do to be saved, Lord. Then we ask you to forgive us for our sins, Lord. For we realize we all have sinned and come short of your glory, Lord. We just thank you for being a God of more than one chance, Lord. Give us chances over and over, Lord, not like man. And we just want to say thank you, Lord. When we come down to the end of our journey, Lord, we ask that you just give us a seat in our kingdom. These prayers and blessings in your darling son, Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
Amen. Come this far by faith. Leaning on the Lord. Trusting in his holy word. Amen. Uh, you find out if you lean on your own strength, uh, you get in trouble. So we need to lean on the Lord. Because uh, as at times, we can't do anything. Uh, but God has all power uh, just have one announcement uh, this morning and it's an uh, important announcement uh, that we're going to be opening up next Sunday uh, we're going to open up uh, and we're going to have uh, temperature checks as we did before uh, we're going to have social distancing as we did before uh, and services at 10 a.m. Um, we know that God is able to do all things but fail. Uh, you have many out there who I saw a lady the other day she had a shirt on and no mask on and she it said uh, faith over fear. Well, I'm going to tell you, a signboard doesn't constitute your faith. Uh, God gives us a mind to think, uh, to reason. Uh, if there had been lions in the store, I'm sure she wouldn't have walked in with a shirt saying faith over fear. Her reasoning that God gave her, the mind to think, we say, I'm not going in there. Amen. So we, we need to get over that. Uh, you know, God gives us a mind to think. And so we, we waited and we, not, not only we thought about things, we, we prayed about it uh, before we made decisions. Uh, when we closed and now they open up. And so we've been led by the Holy Spirit that we can't do what the church next door does or or whomever we have to do what's best for us and so we're gonna we opening uh next sunday uh, again temperature checks and social distancing uh everyone has done a good job when all this happened uh by having things measured out and also we don't want to forget uh veterans day uh november the 11th and we know we have a lot of veterans uh, in our congregation or in our uh, neighborhood. We have a lot of veterans. I'm one myself. Uh, you, you know that. And, uh, and there, there are some that, you know, that are struggling on, on the mental side, uh, some physically. Uh, you know, you, you somewhere one day for a, a year and you're having to watch everything that goes around you. In three days, you're back here and you have to adjust. Uh, so it can be a, a tough thing sometimes. But we, we again, you know, November the 11th, we uh, recognize our veterans. Uh, I don't know, is there a sick and shut in list or anything? Uh, okay. McCoy family. Bereavement. Bereavement. McCoy family. Who? Why is Alfred having surgery tomorrow? Uh, Mills family bereavement. Amen. Amen. And we know that God, even though we don't have a list, uh, we can petition to God and He knows all about it. Uh, it's, it's sometimes we forget to write names down, uh, and God knows about it. Amen. And so we're going to. We're going to pray for them right now. Our gracious Father, uh, Father, we thank you uh, for this day. 
Master, we thank you for things being as well as they are. Uh, Father, you allowed us to come this way again, and we just want to say thank you. Uh, Father, we thank you for lying down last night. I uh, was able to open our eyes, Father, and see a brand new day. And not only that, but able to travel here, Father. And we just thank you today. Father, we're praying for those who may be watching, Father. Uh, uh, not just members, but all those who may be watching. And Father, realize that someone with a head bowed down today. And we're praying that the head be lifted today. Father, give them strength. And Father, we know that there are many that are sick. Father, some that was in uh, great condition before they laid down. Uh, some didn't wake up. And Father, some woke up and they were sick. So we're praying for them today, Father. Father, we ask that you uh, bless those who are bereaving today. Uh, we know that as many, Father, we, we've had just within the year uh, that we've had a funeral service for. And that person meant something to somebody. And so we're praying for them today, Father, that you would give them strength. Master, we ask that you uh, bless every child uh, that's represented in this church. Uh, Father, we know that there's a, 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 things have been different for them, Father. Uh, as they go to school, Father, it's, it's not the same as it was. And Father, we just just praying for them uh, right now. Master, I ask that you bless all that are here today as we try and bring a service, Father, to those who are watching. Uh, Father, just give us strength, Father, today. Uh, bless the musicians, Father, the, the preachers and the, uh, uh, the deacons here, Father. All those that are here are uh, part of the service. And the one that's going to preach your word, Father, we ask that you uh, give him strength. And that we will have attentive ear, Father, and receive it, Father, but apply it to our lives. And we'll be careful to give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. Name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. You know, we, we worry about stuff that we can't even do anything about. We need to learn to lean on Jesus. You know, Lee William I got the song, uh, the late Lee William, where he was saying that he went to his father, he was there for a while, he went to his father, he just went down the line. He went to the preacher, the preacher told him, he need to go down on me, he need to go to Jesus. Jesus is the only one, the only one that, that, that's dependable, you know, he won't let you down. So we need to learn to lean on Jesus. He said, cast, cast your cares upon him and he will give you rest. So learn to lean on Jesus. If there is something that's wrong in your life, God straighten it out. Listen, there's a situation that won't turn out right. You need to let God straighten it out. No, He's the only one without a doubt. Doctor 
Lord has told you there's nothing he can do. You need to let God straighten it out. Oh, he's the only one without a doubt who knows how to straighten it out. One more thing. Seem like your children are out of control. Let God straighten it out. Fathers and drugs have made them so cold. You need to let God straighten it out. He's the only one without a doubt who knows how to straighten it out. You ought to let my God. Whatever it is, just give it to Jesus. Make no difference what you're going through. Turn it over to Jesus. He'll work it out for you. Let God do it. Won't God do it? Won't God do it? If you got burden, he's a burden bearer. If you got problem, he's the problem solver. He's the only one without a doubt. The only one without a doubt. He's the only one without a doubt. Who knows how to spread it out? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Yes, he will. can straighten it out. Thank God for Jesus this morning. Amen. It is a blessing to stand before you this morning to our associate ministers, to our deacons, to our deaconess and our missionary president. Uh, all of you who are tuning us in this morning, we're not coming because we are such a great preacher, or we're such a great church, but we are saved people. Yes, sir. And number has nothing to do with salvation Amen. because it's personal. Yes, sir. Amen. God has used many great men Amen. to do great things. Yes, Amen. Uh, we are no less than anyone else. Neither are we any more than anybody else. But I tell you, you are no more blessed than I am. <laughs> and I come to praise, to sing, to preach to testify that amen and that dance I am not ashamed I will I will dance over your singing and your preaching 
I don't have to be the one doing it. Amen. Uh, God has kept us. And he has kept us for a purpose. We are to be about our Father's business. Amen. This is a time who many are not trusting him, are not trusting the people that he has put over them. Mm -hmm. Those who are over people are not honest with people. But God has still sustained us. We have not gone without a meal. We're not outdoors. Our family is kept. Our neighbors are kept. Mm -hmm. Even our enemies are being kept. Amen. So that is the work of the church to save our enemies by leading them to a savior. Today I'm not going to do a lot of talking. As a matter of fact, uh, as I tell you all the time, you'd be much more pleased with one of these young preachers up here because they are younger, they are uh, faster, and, and, and they can get the job done quick. Yes, Lord. Uh, but I tell you what, sometimes you have to listen to the gray-headed folks. <laughs> they, 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 got, they got some common sense and they got some wisdom. <laughs> they may not have the doctor's degree. But they have the B.A. degree. Been born again. Turn to the book of John, the fourth chapter. This is a very familiar scripture. John, the fourth chapter, beginning with the fourth verse. I'm going to tell you my text so our uh, engineer back there can go ahead and put it on the screen. The woman who met the man of men. The woman who met the man of men. We're going to read from the 4th through the 10th verses. And he must needs go through Samaria. Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, Near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being weary with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples were going away into the city to buy me. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou being a Jew askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealing with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. As I said, our subject is the woman who met the man of me. Right. There are many women who are attracted to men in leadership. Just Thursday night, I believe it was, they had a concert and the people were so attracted to the one that was performing that they just had a a uh, 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 stampede mm -hmm. yeah. going up to yeah. the stage. Mm -hmm. And I think about eight people, I could be wrong, when eight or nine people were killed mm -hmm. because they were smashed mm -hmm. in the crowd 
as others were trying to get to the man. Have you ever heard of anybody being smashed trying to get to Jesus? No. Even the woman that had an issue of blood for 12 years couldn't get to him. But she got down on her knees and crawled on the ground and reached through the crowd and touched the hem of his garment and her issue was healed. She didn't get crushed. We're after the wrong men, church. We're trying to get to the wrong man. We need to try to get to Jesus. Amen. This woman met the man of me. There are many men who are sought after because of their money. Everybody wants security. But I want to tell you this morning, if you're not secure in your salvation, yeah. I don't care how much money you got, you're going to hell. It does not matter how good the man you want to get to looks. If he is not Jesus, you're going after the wrong man. It doesn't matter what kind of car he drives. He can't take you to heaven then. <laughs> you may enjoy the ride down here. <laughs> but there's a man coming one day that's got to take us there. Amen. There are many women who say that they cannot live without a man in their life. But I want you to know if you're alive and you're living and you don't have Jesus, you're not living yet. You're just existing. You need Jesus in your life. And for you men who think you are more than anybody else, you are not more than Jesus. Because you hadn't died for nobody's sin. Right. Did you notice the last verse that I read? And I, I want to I want to point this out right now. It said, "If thou knewest the gift of God, you know, and it's 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 approaching Christmas. We hadn't made it to Thanksgiving, but 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 the trees are already up. Lights are on. Presents are under the tree." But let me tell you something. Here, Jesus said, if thou knewest the gift of God, not the gifts under the tree, but the gift of God, the gift that was put on the tree, not under the tree, but put on the tree. All right, all right, now. You understand? Who's talking to you? I am he in the flesh. Y'all understand? Jesus was God in the flesh. Because he had to come down to show us how to live and experience everything that we may go through. He already been through pandemic. But he's still alive. I want you to know we're going to make it. We're going to make it. Do all that you know to do. And let God do the rest. Well, I know we got some folks, Brother Jay, that say, well, I don't know what's in that shop. Well, it's a lot you don't know what's in. <laughs> But you trust it. Amen. I tell you what, I don't understand how you can see me where you are. And I'm here out in the woods at a church. But you use it. Is that right? So we don't understand how the wireless stuff get in the air. And you don't know how 
this virus gets in the air. You don't know what you breathe. You have not known what you've been breathing. So this is not nothing new. Amen. I'm going to get to the sermon. <laughs> Most of the time, once Jesus had called his disciples, he always had them with him, or he had two or three. Amen. He, he, he never got away from them unless he went away to pray, to talk to the Father. And he tell them, stay here while I go young and pray. But we notice here that he had sent them away to get some food. Yeah. <laughs> but then, let me, let me fast forward a little bit. Remember, remember when they had, had, had feast and hadn't caught nothing. Yeah, and, and when they got to the bank, he already had some fish cooked. <laughs> yeah. And he hadn't been fishing. Yeah. What I want you to know is he don't need what we got to do what he does. He's self-sufficient. Amen. This time on his journey to Galilee, he's alone. But he's not alone. Because his father was with him. It was very hot that day. And it was a desert journey. Meaning he wasn't running across wells every few miles. Mm -hmm. There were only one well in this desert country. Mm -hmm. And it was Jacob's well. Mm -hmm. According to scripture, he did not stop to draw no water. But he stopped because he was weary from his journey. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says he stopped and sat on Jacob's way. Wow. He didn't borrow a bucket to let it down into the well right. Right. to get no water mm -hmm. because he was water. Yes, he, <laughs> water. he was the water right. of life. Mm -hmm. The living water. Right. Yeah. So why would you seek something you already got? <laughs> so he said, on the way. And it said that it was the sixth hour of the day. Mm -hmm. Meaning that it was 12 midday. It was the hottest part of the day. Right. You know, we, 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 we say, you know, that, that evening temperature is what really gets you. Well, it gets you because you've been out there in it all day. Mm -hmm. But the hottest part is at noon. Mm -hmm. All other women had already come to the well and got their water for the day. Because they either came in the morning or they came late in the evening. Not in the scorching heat of the day. This woman's name is not important because it was not mentioned. But she came at midday to avoid an encounter with anyone else. Yes, Come on. And, 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 and you know we got some folks like that today. They got certain times they go to the grocery store so they don't run into certain people. Certain time of the month that they go to the grocery store because they know it's going to be crowded around the first. So they do their big shopping some other time during the month to avoid the encounter with someone else. And that's not unusual for us today. See, there are people who have already done their ship Christmas shopping because they don't want to be out in the crowd when Christmas gets near. So they want to already have their shopping done. But we must admit that Jews despise Samaritan. So right now, it's not unusual for certain races to 
despise other races. Because it has always been. You know, now we got Asian haters. We got black haters. We got uh, Hispanic haters. We got Latinos haters. We, we got people from Haiti that's being hated. Uh, all around the world, there is somebody that hates somebody else. But there is only one person that loves everybody. And that's Jesus. Amen. He's the only one. She was not only despised by the Jews, but she was an outcast because of her immoral lifestyle to go along with her race. Double. Come on now. Isn't that something? Yeah. 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 See, people can hate you because of what race you in. And they can hate you for what you got. They can hate you for the neighborhood you live in. Because they think you're not good enough to live where you live. You're not good enough to drive the automobile that you drive. So they just stop you because of the automobile you're in. Kill people for no reason. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. This woman's story can be applied to life today. As the conversation continued, Jesus didn't start out by telling her what she was doing wrong. But you know, you know how we are. If we know somebody doing something, the first thing we want to do. Why are you doing such and such? Don't you know that's wrong? <laughs> but what you need to do is make friends with that person before you get into their lifestyle. And as a matter of fact, their business is not your business anyway. There would be a lot of marriages that would be alive today if they had been kept between two people, the husband and the wife. But in-laws get in. Friends get in. Unmarried folks get in. Other folks marry. Now how can you tell me how my marriage ought to be and you ain't never been married? <laughs> Benny Henry, you preaching this morning if you don't preach no more. <laughs> but he wants her to be truthful see when it comes to Jesus you can't lie to him you can tell me a lie and you can convince me to believe but you can't convince Jesus to believe a lie see back then the, 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 the man was supposed to be the head of the house Remember when Paul and Silas was in jail and the jailer got saved? They didn't just baptize the jailer, but the Bible say they baptized his whole household. Because the man is supposed to be the head. Now I didn't say that's true in all cases, but I said he is supposed to be. Now that's the way God made him he. All right. He said because the woman, this is the Bible, don't say Benny Henry said it, that she is the weaker vessel. That's right. that's what and why are you going to put somebody weak over somebody stronger than you? All right. All right. Oh, we got to get some stuff lined up right. and we want the blessings of the Lord. Right. Amen. That don't, that don't mean that, that the man is, is going to be right all the time. But it means that he is the head. Well, I know y'all know about King, 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 King David, right? You know, he, he was the one that, that, that saw the woman up on the rooftop. And, 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 and she was bathing. 
Now, if she was bathing, she couldn't have had on clothes, could she? So she was sunbathing. So I don't know if they had suntan lotion back then, but they had oil. She was out there with the oil on her, letting the sun tan her body. And she exposed herself. He didn't go to her. She was laying out there. But he got accused. <laughs> you right. Woo, Benny Henry, what are you talking about? Shame on you, preacher. So David got blamed for it. But she was the tempter. Fathers should be leaders of the family. Now you notice there was never anything said about David's wife. She could have been a hell racer. She could have not wanted him to touch her when she, he was at home. We don't know that. But a lot of women drive their husbands in the street. Amen, Amen Ben him. Yeah. Because they don't treat them right at home. Everybody wants some loving sometimes. <laughs> ben and Henry, shut up. <laughs> Jesus was not concerned about this woman's children. But she was, he was concerned about her husband. And this is a sad answer that she admits to him that I have no husband. But see, when you're talking to somebody that already know, they know you lie. He, he said, you said, right, you done had five, and the one you got now ain't you. See, see, this, this is the lie that folks come up with. Well, you know, you can get married seven times. Because this, this woman got a nerve, they're going to be number seven, right? <laughs> she already at number six. But this one didn't come and propose to her. No, no. But it was a man that she needed in her life. Yeah. Number seven. She a seven is a complete number. That's right. After she met number seven, she probably didn't need another husband. That's right. She found out she could make it on her own. Yeah. Now, how disappointing, but so rewarding. That she didn't have a husband. And he asked her about it. Uh -huh. But. Let's remember. That water. Brought us into the world. That's right. yeah. And it is essential. For life. Yeah. Even when a person dies. Yeah. And when they died. In biblical days. Yeah. They got bathed with water. Uh -huh. The last thing they got. Was a bath. The last thing you're going to get when you get out here is the bath. Then you will get him uh -huh. But this water that Jesus gives springs up into everlasting life. This woman, not just in the scorching sun, but she had a parched soul. Her soul was parched. Alone with the parting son. Yeah. Because she did not know Jesus. See, there were some in the Bible that had heard he was coming through. Mm -hmm. And they met him on the roadside. But she had not heard nothing about him sitting on the way. Mm -hmm. But when she got there, there he sat on the way. Mm -hmm. This woman not only had a scarred soul, but many have accepted Jesus as the Son of God, but have not received the love story that God has behind. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. 
that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Yes, right. I'm here to tell you right now that in this love story, uh-huh. there must be truth of redemption. Yes, right. you, you, you can't lie about whether you want Jesus in your heart or not, Come on, right. but you got to make the space. Yes. You got to open up the door yes. so that he can come in. He didn't say that he'd break in, but he said if you'll open the door, I'll come in and I'll sup with you. So it's time for us to receive all that God has to offer us. He wants to give us the best gift. The gift of his son who was willing to come down in the flesh and show us how to live. He was willing to come down and tell us what we need to say, Mm -hmm. how to say it, and when to say it. I'm glad that he met this woman. Because when he met her, she wasn't an outcast. But after she met him, she was better than any newscaster that CNN has. Come on Go tell me she went back to town Come on, say it and she didn't go to folks that she didn't know. Yeah. But he said she went to all the men yeah. right. because for some reason or another they already knew about it. Uh-huh. But she said I want you to come and see a man, see a man. Yeah. See a man. that I know has to be a prophet uh-huh. because he told me Everything that I have ever done. See, the Bible said to know a true prophet that the words that he say must be true. But if you meant a lying prophet, then you know he's not of God. But she knew this man was of God. Mm -hmm. And it say everybody in the city followed her back to meet Jesus. She didn't come back and tell him I met him and I've been called to preach. She didn't say, I met him and now I'm an apostle. She didn't say, I met him and now I'm a disciple. But she said, I met a prophet who told me everything. See, sometimes you need to recognize other folk. Realize that God ain't always calling you to do something. But he's calling you to tell somebody else something. I'm glad this morning that one day he stopped by at my house. Told me that I got a greater work for you to do, Benny Henry. I had been teaching Sunday school. Been on the usher boat. Made the Bible class. Played for the choir. Sang in the choir. Taught the crusade. Carried them camping out in the woods. But he said, I got a greater work for you. I want you to go and preach my word. I want you to know it wasn't no voice I heard at night. I went out in the woods and I heard him call me. But I was convicted by the word of God that he wanted me to help spread the word. Ever since then, I've been rising and I've been falling. I've had some good days and I've had some bad days. Had some sick days, but I had more good days than I had bad days. I'm glad this morning that we need to let the world know that Jesus is alive and well. He died on the cross. But he didn't die as a sinner. He was the one on the cross that died for sinners. I'm glad that my sin debt was paid one Friday evening out on Calvary's cross. Tell me the world got dark. Tell me graves were open up. But tell me nobody got out of the grave. Not until Jesus rose on that third day morning. Then Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, all the rest of them got up and walked the streets of Jerusalem. 
Oh, that would have been good to have witnessed that evening. But I'm glad that one day I'm going to walk the streets of Jerusalem with me. Amen. Amen. All those that's gone before haven't been crowned yet. When they get crowned, we're going to get our crown. When they get that robe, we're going to get our long white robe. Amen. Amen. I don't want just a plain crown. I want some stars in my crown. Amen. I want some stars in my crown. I ain't promised no shoes. Because I ain't never walked on no gold. I had a little gold ring on my finger when I was married. But I put it, put it off after my wife died. But I got a ring I can put on the other thing. But it don't mean nothing. I tell you, when I walk those golden streets, every day gonna be happy. Every month gonna be like the month. You know, if, I told you on the other side, if Adam had a just not even of the forbidden fruit in the garden, all we would have had was just a good God. But since he ate of the tree, now we got a mess. <laughs> he didn't do bad. He made it better for us. Jesus said he's going away to prepare a place for us. But he's coming back one day. Amen. If he was dead, he couldn't come back. But he ain't dead. So we know he's coming back. Yeah.
for each and every one of us that we might have the right to the tree of life. Uh, thank Pastor for those words. Uh, thank him for allowing God to use him. Amen. He, he spoke of the young preachers, but he, he looked pretty young today. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, more energy than I have. <laughs> amen. Uh, amen. Uh, we thank God for him. And, and I don't know about the young people. I try to tell because I'm getting older now. And I tell the young ones, you know, you need to listen to. Uh, the ones that come before us. Uh, don't think you know everything. Uh, uh, you get a lot of wisdom. You listen and you can learn learn some things because uh, there's some things in the in your class you just won't get uh, uh, it's some scenarios that you can only speak to your pastor your older preachers about that can tell you because they didn't have and been through it before amen so won't hold you we're gonna have uh, our Lord's Supper today 
uh, Holy Communion. Uh, I want to let you know that you can partake with us where you're at right now. Amen. Uh, sometimes I'm not here on first Sunday, so I'm not telling you something that I don't do. Uh, I would do it as, as well. And I want to let you know, because there's been some teaching that uh, got people confused. And, and so, uh, listen, this is a, a, a biblical commandment that we have, just like being baptized. It's a biblical commandment. It's not for you to, you thinking and say, well, uh, I don't want to take it this time, I'll take it next time. Yeah, come on now. It's a biblical command. And, and uh, Jesus didn't say a lot of times to, in Scripture about remember him, doing in remembrance of him. Right. He said of some other things, yeah. but not in said of remembrance of him. And so you think about remembering as all you think something in the past. But when he says, remember me, we know that he's alive and well Amen. of him being present Amen. in our life today. Right now. So, rem so remember that yes, sir. Uh, as we do our communion today. We're going to go down here. Or? Okay. Again, with Jesus and his disciples in the upper room, he said, often you do this in remembrance of me. Uh, ask Roderick if you uh, bless the bread. Well, Andrew, bless the cup. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for this day, Lord. Oh, we thank you for the word that's been taught to us today, Father. We thank you for the man that broke the bread of life today, Father. Now we ask you to bless this bread, for we know it's not your body, but it's in members of you. But this is our prayer, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Lord, we come right now, asking your blessing upon this cup. Realize, Lord, that this is not your blood, but symbol of your blood, Lord. We ask you to just continue to look down on us. And bless us as you see fit, Lord. Mm -hmm. You know we can't do anything without it, Lord. Amen. Right. Have mercy on us, Lord. Please, Lord. We thank you for all things, and mostly thank you for your son. Mm -hmm. Each present blessing is our son. Mm -hmm. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And again, uh, Jesus and the disciples in the upper room, he said, often you do this in remembrance of me, and we're gonna, we do it until he comes again. Yes, Lord. Uh, amen. Amen. Uh, again, think about it where you are, you can partake with us today uh, as we have in it right now. Um, we notice this is not uh, Jesus' broken body, but it's in remembrance of his broken body. Let us eat together. And we notice it's not his shedded blood, but it's in remembrance of his shedded blood. Let us drink together. And they said when they left out, they sung a hymn and, and they went out. Get Marcus. Yeah. 